There is a new sheriff in town when it comes to defending North Atlantic right whales in Cape Cod Bay. For as long as many remember, Stormy Mayo has been the one heading up the right whale program at the Center for Coastal Studies. In the wake of Stormy's retirement, we meet his successor, Daniel Palazzos. I grew up in a very urban environment in Bogota, Colombia, and uh, nevertheless, I was always finding little ponds and parks and places where I could collect bugs and frogs, and uh, I was just obsessed with nature. So when did whales come into his life? I just remember lifting up my binoculars and just seeing this almost an apparition of a, of a whale back and then the fluke lifting and going down. So it's, as I said, very etched in my mind and it was very magical. My choice for college was really uh, follow through on this idea of becoming a marine biologist and at that time it just seemed like almost an impossible task. Again growing up in Colombia there was only one university that offered an undergraduate degree in marine biology and I didn't really want to study anything else. I considered vet school for a little while but I didn't want to be an animal doctor. I wanted to study animals in the wild. So um, despite my warnings from my family about what are you doing, this sounds, this sounds pretty crazy, you're going to starve to death and you know there's not even, I, I grew up in the mountains, uh, so like there's not even an ocean around here. But uh, I knew about the school um, and I studied marine biology uh, in Colombia and then led, led, led me down this professional path of uh, studying whales eventually. Coming from Oregon State University, Dr. Palazzos brings a lot to the table. So I've been here for about three months. I arrived in May and uh, there has been time of transition with Stormy Mayer who was the founder of the program and has been here for over 40 years doing this long-term study on North, North Atlantic right whales. It, it's, it's one of the strengths of the center is that it's not any one person, it's us together and we work together and we, we, we grow and float each other's boat. And now with uh, Dr. Daniel Palacios coming in, Stormy this week spent almost every day for two full weeks working with Daniel Palacios just as an orientation to even before he actually comes to take the job. That speaks well about Stormy being so kind and so caring that he wants to make sure this fellow has everything he has. And, but it also, Stormy's opinion is Daniel will be able to carry the legacy even further. So in terms of uh, adapting to the program and uh, being able to just plug in and run, fortunately I think Stormy and I think in very similar ways um, scientifically and also I think we have very similar personalities as far as how we approach things and that has helped tremendously. He has been extremely generous with his time, his knowledge, um, his ability to provide any input, any support. So it has been pretty easy. My primary occupation is being a scientist, a researcher. I don't call myself a conservationist because what I want to do is to study the ecology. At the same time, from the very beginning when I became interested in these, in whales, the first thing is like, oh, a number of their populations are in trouble, are going extinct, or uh, they're at very low numbers. So I knew from the very beginning that I was studying uh, species that because of their in nature they were in constant conflict with humans. So that influences how I approach my studies because my studies are focusing on the ecology but there's always a primary directive to make sure that that information that we're collecting about the whales, about Cape Cod Bay ecology has direct relevance to the question of how they are managed, how we can do um, implement or figure out better strategies for managing them that are hopefully more flexible, that are more driven by the data. We need a lot of data to make good decisions, ideally. Are there differences between the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean? 
The, the situation in the North Atlantic, other than some specifics, is actually not that different in general, especially um, being in U.S. waters, the policies that come down from the federal government and even state governments and so forth uh, are all pretty well synchronized in terms of how the U.S. manages its protected resources like whales and a number of other species that are protected. North Atlantic Ocean is much more heavily industrialized. It's a smaller ocean basin and uh, much more heavily populated along the coasts, both on the western and the eastern side, which means there's a lot more commerce, maritime traffic, shipping, uh, people on the water compared to the west coast. Uh, it's much, uh, much more open, less populated environment. So where that has an impact is directly with many more users on the marine, of, the, of the marine environment being on the water on a given day as well, because obviously uh, being so heavily populated and for so much longer, the sources of pollution and um, outflows of things that contain chemicals, microplastics, all that. Um, it's a much higher volume of that going into the ocean. So that's another aspect that indirectly, through the food chain, influences uh, whale health and ecosystem health. Well, the center has, for, uh, since its inception over 40 years ago, intentionally remained a small grassroots base, very nimble, organization that nevertheless produces high quality science. Once I came here and started working with Stormy, as I mentioned earlier, there was a period of transition where both of us were working together and um, we got along really well. I got to, uh, I have to say that I um, became friends with, we became good friends and we have, um, you know, establish a good report, which really helps in terms of uh, knowing that even though this is a big task in terms of uh, taking on a program that has been going on for over 40 years, where every year we tend to do the same kind of activity. It's a long term. It was one of the few places in the world where we have a, such a long term, long term study on a whale species. It's quite unique. And that was part of the draw for me to come here. The question of putting implant, implantable tags on whales is something that um, it's, uh, it's a bit, has generated a bit of a debate, which I think is very healthy to do. Uh, what's happened is that with the North Atlantic right whales, because their numbers are so low, and uh, people have already a number of concerns regarding their health because they are constantly getting entangled in fishing gear, they are suffering from ship strikes, all of that. In a way, it's kind of like adding insult to injury. And there's certainly this prevailing sense in the scientific community that the precautionary principle is something that we should always try and follow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the loss of species in a way you know, if anything, just reflects on, on how we approach our relationship to nature. So uh, hopefully, you know, at the very least, being confronted with this potential extinction is something that causes us to pause and to think about uh, doing more and engaging more and how can we um, think outside the box or in this case outside the bubble and I know that it's not easy because we tend to live our comfortable lives we are very busy with our daily occupations and you go well at, at least in my everyday activities I try to be a good person and try to you know use resources natural resources in a wise way but uh, it has to go beyond that because basically we are at that point where we are overtaxing nature. If we give them enough space, they can recover. So that's why I say we should not give, give up hope until they are gone. But hopefully we'll never get there. Hopefully we'll course correct before we get there.